Hi guys, and welcome to Seven Below. My name is Bird and I am your curvy sewist. You guys have heard of Five Below. If you're in the US, these are stores where everything in the store is basically $5 or left, less. Today, our Seven Below is about seven sewing tools that are less than $7. Sewing can we be expensive. We know that. I've already shared tips in some of the other videos on how you can save money on fabric and sewing machines and all of those different kinds of things. Today, I'm sharing seven of my favorite sewing tools, all less than $7. They are not in any particular order, but let's go ahead and get started. The Seam Ripper. You can get these for as little as $1.50. You can buy them in multi-packs. I recommend the multi-packs because they do dull over time. And why spend the money to have them sharpened? I don't know anyone that does that anyway. So I would recommend tossing them out and getting brand new ones. I like this particular one. And there's no brand name actually on this. I probably got this for very little. This one has a little bit of like a nub, which acts as an, an eraser. Basically, it helps you to get your fabric, um, the thread out of your fabric after you've already done the seam ripping. Get used to these because you're going to need this. I, I pull it out with every make. It is very unusual for me to make something and not have to pull out the seam ripper. So number one is the seam ripper. Number two is a point turner. So I was late getting to the point turner game, but I'm here now, guys, and this is, again, one of those less than seven. When you are working on collars, you want to be able to have this so you can have those nice, crisp corners in a collar or a pocket. You can use the pointy end or even the rounded end. It is also good for leather, like if you're working with some garment items, fabric items that heat isn't really the best friend for those kind of garments, and I like to do a lot of faux leather, you can actually use this to help to kind of flatten some of your seams. But the pointy piece or even the rounded piece, so what I did was I created a mini collar. A mini collar, so what you would normally do is you would cut into the, the corners of the collar and not cut through the actual stitches, and then you actually turn it out. So when I first turn it out, if this was a, a collar, guys, you see how that collar looks, the end, it's not particularly crisp. So what I would do, or what you would do with a point turner is just gently push this into that corner, and right away, when you take this to the ironing board, big difference in a very clean, crisp, crisp corner. So I did that for both. So this is like a mini corner or a pocket, and it makes a big difference. So that is number two, and it is the point turner. Number three is what is called a bodkin, B-O-D-K-I-N. And there are a couple different ones. There's a new one that I'm planning to try, but this is the one that I've had for a couple years and I do like it. It hasn't failed. Basically what I use the bodkin for is if you have, say, an elastic casing, this is one way to use it. Or if you have a drawstring that you need to pull through a particular casing, you take the bodkin and this is a big, this is actually a piece of elastic that my Victoria's Secrets pajamas came in. It was, this was wrapped around it. I didn't throw it out because I thought this was, was pretty soft elastic that I will reuse for something else. But it's great for the demonstration. So I put the bodkin in, their little teeth there, and I just lock in the fabric that way. So that's what you do. And then you basically thread it into whatever your casing you like to thread it into. It slides through super, super easy. And then you get your elastic or whatever it is that you need to pull through. And then you just simply remove the bodkin. That is number three, inexpensive, highly recommended. Number four is actually a loop turner. So this one I've used a lot. It's a little bit bent. You usually can get them in a two or three pack. Here's a shorter one. Here's a longer one. And this one, the way that it works is this fabric is right sides facing. And I just have a seam right there. Is you slip it in. There's a little hook 
Can you guys see that hook? That little hook, you hook into your fabric. And every now and then I have to re-hook it because it comes loose. You hook it in and then you gently guide the fabric to the other side. Let's hope it works first time and I don't lose it. There it is. It worked first time through and it, it pulls it right side out. So the seam is now inside and you have a nice clean seam and you just take it now to your ironing board and give it a little bit of a press. So that is the point turner. Highly recommend it. Very inexpensive. So that is, we're now up to four. Let's head over to five, six, and seven. Um, actually, I forgot to bring one piece over, but I'll grab that. Sewing needles, guys. Sewing needles are inexpensive. Generally, you should put in a new sewing needle, needle every time you do a new project. Okay, real, real talk, guys. I don't do that with every project. Now, I will do it after a couple projects. And if I was working with, um, if I'm working with fabric that's kind of thick or something like that, I might change it at, at the end of that project. These are super expensive. There are a couple different brands. This is the one um, that I have in hand today, but there are some others as well that works fine. Just make sure that it is compatible with your sewing machine. Very inexpensive, a couple dollars, and you can already see that I've used a few in the pack. And then just make sure that you discard them safely. So that's number five. Six, sewing clips. Sewing clips, guys. Uh-oh. <laughs> I am a fan of sewing clips inexpensive, way less than $7. I don't think they, you know, every now and then my, one might pop and I throw it out, but they're really great for holding fabric together. And guess what? You don't get stuck. Accidentally, if I'm using regular sewing pins, guys, I have drawn blood so many times. Let's just be real. Okay. So my go-to will be um, a sewing clip, but I could not leave you guys. I'm looking for my, my pins because I had them right here, but I was working on a project. My pins are, rounds us out. There they are. So my sewing pins rounds out my seven. So my seven sewing tools under $7. And I like these because they have these little pearl type um, ends. They're easy. For me to grasp i like the different colors so i have that contrast because i need that contrast with my fabric because if i don't see it i am likely to injure myself i recommend that you don't put your pins in your mouth when you're sewing i was literally doing a live yesterday with black women stitch lisa she's amazing and she talked about a sewist that um, actually inhaled one of these and it's stuck in her lungs so don't put it in your mouth while you're sewing guys put it down so those are my seven items. Let me count them, make sure it was seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. We have the point turner. We have the loop turner. There is the seam ripper. Sewing needles. Bodkin. Clips. And pins. So those are my top sewing tools, all under $7. Remember, sewing does not have to be expensive. It is fun. Enjoy the entire journey, the experience. It is amazing, but it doesn't need to rob the bank, right? It doesn't need to rob the bank. So that's all that I have for you guys. Let me know what you think. Drop comments below, questions, whatever. Um, I love to hear from you guys. And I appreciate you guys being here and listening and watching. So happy sewing. Happy sewing for now, guys. I will talk to you soon. This is Bird. Bye-bye.